With the upcoming completion of the Rapid Transit System or RTS link between Johor Bahru and Singapore by the end of 2026, it has sparked discussions about how it potentially impacts the property market and Singapore's economy in general. Let's talk about the potential consequences of this cross-border connection. The first impact that many people anticipate is that there will be an increased demand for JB properties. If RTS is really as convenient, fast, and the immigration processes are simplified, then living in JB will be a more attractive option, especially for Malaysians who work in Singapore. Some Singaporeans might even be attracted to the lifestyle given the living cost in JB is about a third of the living cost in Singapore. This is also reflected with the surge in property purchases in JB, especially near the planned RTS stations. Analysts predict the property prices in these areas to increase even further when the project is almost completed. The next impact that might happen is the rental market in Singapore might soften. As you know, a lot of people are complaining about the rental prices getting higher and higher in Singapore. According to the URA's rental index, prices for all private residential properties in Singapore increase almost by 30% year-on-year after the pandemic, and the landlords can get away with this due to the high demand. But if RTS can truly provide an easy commute, some people might just consider living in JB and just commuting on a daily basis, especially for those who are working in companies that offer a hybrid mode where they can work from home a couple of days a week. This could potentially lower the demand of rental properties in Singapore, particularly in areas close to the border. If the demand is lower but there are a lot of supplies, then some landlords might have to consider lowering their rental prices to make it more attractive for tenants. But I don't expect this to have much impact for the central core region. I mean, if a renter originally was thinking of renting in Woodlands, they might as well just rent in JB, right? But if they are planning to rent in Novena, for example, I don't think they will rent in JB because it's too far of a stretch. Another impact that potentially could happen further down the road is that we might see some MNCs moving to Malaysia. Don't get me wrong. Singapore's overall conducive business environment, well-established port and logistic infrastructure, and also political stability will still be attractive for many companies. But at the end of the day, most companies want to maximize their profit. The reality is, there are a lot of Malaysian workers in Singapore, which means they have a wide talent pool. Rather than hiring them here, and paying them in Singapore dollars, some companies might think, hey, why not just open an office in JB, hire those Malaysians, and pay them in ringgit. It'll save them the labor cost. The operational cost in Malaysia is generally cheaper as well, so why not, right? Well, I don't expect to see a mass exodus of companies leaving Singapore, but I do some possibility of some MNCs opening a satellite office in JB to do back office work or moving their manufacturing facilities there. They might still keep their headquarters here in Singapore, but the size might be smaller than before. That could unfortunately indirectly result in some layoffs. Another trend that I foresee coming will be the business growth in JB, especially in the entertainment, retail, and health industries. If JB is a short train commute away from Singapore, then it'll be easier for tourists to go there. Even before RTS, we already saw a lot of amusement parks built in JB, and in the future, I believe we will see even more of them. Another industry that can benefit from RTS is the retail industry in JB. Even now, so many Singaporeans cross the causeway just for cheaper gas and groceries. Once RTS is open, people who don't have a car can also do their groceries in JB. I also believe the healthcare industry in JB will flourish. In general, healthcare is not cheap, especially if you have a lot of complications. Currently, there are a lot of people going to Penang for treatments, but with an easier commute from Singapore, I believe there will be more healthcare facilities popping up in JB as well. Visitors from neighboring Southeast Asian countries might flock to JB as well for medical tourism. The next impact that many people predict is that there will be more people choosing to retire in JB. JB offers significantly lower living expenses compared to Singapore. This includes housing, food, and general daily costs. Retirees could significantly stretch their retirement savings by living in JB. The RTS will provide a quick and convenient way to travel between JB and Singapore. This will allow retirees to easily visit family or run errands in Singapore if needed, but without dealing with the high cost of living in Singapore full-time. Studies suggest that a significant portion, up to one-third of Singaporean retirees, are interested in living in JB. The RTS is expected to 
further accelerate this trend. If you are tempted to live in JB, note that Singaporeans cannot live in Malaysia full-time with a tourist visa. Tourist visas are intended for short-term visits for a maximum of 30 days for Singaporeans entering Malaysia. It does not give you permission for long-term residence or work in Malaysia. Even if let's say you go in and out of Malaysia before the 30 days limit, it will still look suspicious to Malaysian immigration if you do this too often. Overstaying a tourist visa can lead to fines, detention, and even a ban on future entry to Malaysia. If you are a Singaporean considering living in Malaysia full-time, you'll need to explore alternative visa options such as the MM2H or Malaysia My Second Home program, seeking for employment visa, or apply for a social visit pass or long-term pass. If you like to know more about how to apply for the MM2H visa, click link in the description down below as I have discussed this in my other video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!